You might not think that data and e-commerce are that sexy, but they're two massively important areas for London's tech community, and Qubit is right at the center of that, founded by four ex-Googlers in 2010. Co-founder Graham Cook is joining us today, and it's hard not to be excited by his infectious enthusiasm for the technology space. So for the uninitiated, yeah. Tell us what Qubit does. So Qubit is a technology for marketers to help them provide better, more meaningful experiences for their customers on their website. We're kind of breaking the boundaries that marketers have had for years, which is not bad access to data or no data available at all, and then uh, stuck from IT processes so they can't actually make changes to their website. Um, and okay. for the customer, it, proves, it, it creates a great experience. You get the stuff you want, the offers you want, you can find the things you're looking for. Websites just work better. Okay, so fine-grained analysis yeah. of, the, the pro, of the procedure, the process that a consumer takes through the website. Yeah. So you could see, I guess, if somebody drops out at this point on the website, why is that? Yeah, exactly. And then present conclusions to them about, exactly. about it. We're using big data techniques to measure what a user does. So for instance, our technology collects about five, half a trillion events a year across our hundreds of customers, our retailers. And those then, uh, the marketer makes a decision with that information on why people drop out on a product page because he didn't provide the right information. People drop out in the basket because he didn't give the delivery information. And then our system then provides the ability to then create that solution in the site. And we drive about 3.3 billion personalizations uh, a year at the moment. This is in a, in a really interesting space between website design and then a more sort of data-based analysis of site design and then a bit of instinct about consumer behavior. Exactly. It's bringing together, we see what we do is bringing together a creative decision-making process with the science of data uh, and reducing the boundaries of, of technology blockers from being able to change things. And um, you know, it's a little bit like uh, what, we're, what we're really trying to do is help the marketer be able to just feel and touch the website and understand their customer as if they were helping them around a shop. Brilliant idea, but where did it come from? Well, I guess it, we were all, the four of founders, me and three other guys, we were all at Google together between New York, London, Mountain View. And uh, we were dealing with a lot of big data projects at Google over the last couple of years. And in the last two years at Google, working on an initiative to help them figure out how to drive conversion rates and uh, working on products like Google Analytics and learning about what these products were doing for businesses and saw a huge opportunity in the market uh, to, to figure out data for retailers and help them drive sales with data. But why not do this project within Google? Did you just think it was too much of a good specific business opportunity? I think um, Google hires entrepreneurs and you reach a point where you get an entrepreneurial experience at Google, it's an incredible place to work but then you want to go out there in the real world and just blank canvas trying to do something yourself. And that's why we decided to leave and set something up. So tell us about some of your clients. Who, who, what kind of companies are using Qubit? Yeah, I mean, we work with really exciting fashion brands like Topshop uh, and, the, and the Arcadia Group. We work with stationary companies like Staples. We work with other, fresh, uh, other brands like Harvey's Furniture. And really what our technology is driving is this we, we support something called the experience web. The experience web is about going onto a website and then interacting with products, interacting with information, and having a great experience. And it's not necessarily about just going to buy something at the lowest price. The, those sites we call the utility web, and Amazon is really dominating that space. How has the idea changed since you started? Because these things inevitably do change, don't they? Yeah. When, when we started the business, we initially were just going to data mining. We wanted to collect data that already exists within web analytics or marketing systems on our clients. And we wanted to then uh, apply our algorithms to spot patterns in that data and then provide a dashboard to give the client that information back. It was kind of like in a more advanced web analytics. What we realized when we were doing that was that businesses actually didn't even have very good data in the first place. The data wasn't detailed enough, it wasn't useful. Um, and it was so unstructured and so difficult to collect that it was actually quite hard to make this work. And then when we actually did collect the data, did apply our algorithms in the dashboard, the businesses did a terrible job of actually doing anything with the data. They would just sit on it. So we decided that we wanted to create a connected process, an integrated workflow between what a user does on your website, be able to see that in a dashboard, and then be able to target that user or target a group of users with a solution in the site, all within the same workflow. And, and everything we do, it's designed to take like less than a minute. 
what would take two weeks takes less than a minute to do now for a marketer. There's this interesting point about data that it has the appearance of being objective, but yeah. of course is only subjective, or it's only as good as the process by which it was gathered and the process by which it is analysed. Exactly. How do you get, get around that? How do you make sure that the data that, that is pulled from all your client sites is actually meaningful? Yeah, it's a, it's a, great, it's a great challenge, actually. I mean, we, we called the company Qubit for that reason. Qubit is a, it, it, by name is a, is a quantum mechanics concept of how something can be in two different states at the same time. And so data is like that. You have to interpret data in the right way. We try and give the marketer the, the best tools to develop their hypothesis then they generate a solution to the problem on their site, like a delivery proposition issue, and then they can A-B test that solution to see if it was right or not. And so what we're actually helping our marketers do, everything they do is tested, but they're going into it with a hypothesis. And at the end of the day, they know if what they're doing is adding value. You're using video quite a lot now to explain your products to people. Why video? Well. It's a format, actually, we, we, we hired a, a, a wonderful creative strategy director, Simon, who comes, he doesn't come from a technology space, he comes from a creative space. And so he's taken the geeks that we are and said, okay, I want to make what you guys do very human. And so one of his formats is video, and he does a lot with video. We have cameras around the office, and we just, uh, if we've got uh, an idea or a way of positioning the product, we'll just shoot that. And we've had such a great response. We started doing this since the relaunch about a month ago, two months ago. Now we're looking at doing 20-second bite-sized videos with a teleprompter for all of our features in the product. It's like a mini Kickstarter plug at the beginning of all of your features. Exactly. I mean, we want to basically, when you go to the help center, we want our customer, the marketer, to be able to just say, well, how do I do this? Okay, I'll watch a quick clip. And they get it. It's such a great medium to just understand something quickly rather than just plain text. You're trying to to be far more innovative, to challenge every area of how your business works. So tell us what that actually really means. I mean, innovation is a very overused word and a, an underused concept. Really. Yeah, it's a very good point. I think when we look at the technologies that marketers have had to uh, manage their websites over the last 15 years, they're clunky, they're slow. They're these, either the big e-commerce platforms that are tons of acquisitions into one system or they're web analytics platforms that are very difficult to use. You know, it's almost like these, uh, these, these bastions of the organization control everything. They don't let anybody access that information. We want to release everything. We want the marketer to be able to, like equivalent of walking around the store. And so we look at ways of breaking the problem down. We look at ways of making things uh, bite-sized and achievable to understand. And so everything we do about our brand is about being fast. It's about being open. You know, we, we have open source technology for our tag management. We are, uh, we, we, our marketing is about how can you do personalization in less time than making coffee. You know, we're, we're all about being fast, open, agile, and convenient for the marketer. And that, that's really what we're challenging today with the more traditional companies. Do you think this technology is changing our brains? If it's certainly changing the way we work, then what effects is it having on, the, on our minds? Yeah, I mean, the, Technology is definitely going to start to change how our minds work and personalization, uh, if, you, if you personalize to the point where you're only seeing things that are relevant to you then, you, then you stop experiencing new things and that becomes this filter bubble people talk about. So I think that's a bad thing. Our technology isn't about just driving things with algorithms, it's not just about automation algorithms, it's actually about creative people being able to use data in a friendly way to create new solutions for their customers and then see how their customers react to that. So we're, we're all about trying to give customers new experiences. Um, but it's interesting, I think you know, one of the other technologies that's certainly changing my brain at the moment that I love is, is Evernote. Just in the same way, when I think I need to find some information, I think of the Google search I'm going to do. I now, when I think I need to, I've got an idea, I think of the Evernote link on my phone and I think of the tag I'm going to give it so I can retrieve that when I need that memory back in a couple of weeks. Good plug for Evernote there. And actually, this is an Evernote moleskin, so uh -oh. uh, there you go. Uh oh. Um, what else is really exciting yeah. and challenging, and what's a really good opportunity, do you think, in the, in the wider technology space? Yeah, I'm really excited, and I know it's probably being, uh, it's, it's at that early stage of hype now, but I'm really excited about the Internet of Things. I think, uh, I think all devices connected together measuring what we do and how we interact with them in a private way. I mean, I don't think this is so much about a privacy issue. I think it's more about how can I make my electricity bills lower? How can I make my life more efficient? How can I spend time doing more meaningful things? 
hanging out with my family, hanging out with the people I care about, rather than doing things that are a waste of time, like doing the washing or something. If I can find ways of, of automating that and making that more efficient, I think it'll make people's lives richer. Some really interesting ideas in there. Thank you very much for joining us, Thanks and we'll be keeping a close eye on what Qubit's doing. Thanks. Thank you.